Hey, what's going on, everybody? I am back once again. Man, this year is dwindling down. Uh, it's like we're at the final stages of the year. You know, if you haven't started thinking about 2020, you're uh, quite honest with you. You're behind the eight ball, so it's time to get a move on. I know your schedules right now are hectic because you've got Christmas shopping that you got to do. You got last minute work you got to do. And if you're focusing on your budgets for next year, you're working on that, um, which should really kind of coincide with some of the goals that you got going on for the year. But, you know, needless to say, you got a lot going on right now. But I bet you if you was to dwindle things down and really take a look at it, you really don't have that much quote unquote important stuff that you got to do going on right now. A lot of times I know for me, December is a dead month. It's not too much business that you can really do unless you're in a retail business. Retail business, this is your month. This can make or break it for you for the year. This is the month to get you in the black. That's why they call Black Friday in November. Black Friday is to hopefully get you back in the black and out of the red. But let's say you're not in retail business and you just provide a service. It's kind of hard to get somebody to add a new service at this time of year. So you've already scheduled this time of year to be like a a downside. So what you got to do is make sure that you are planning and preparing for the beginning of the year. You know, I I often, because I'm down here in Hampton Roads, right? I often think about all the times I go down to Virginia Beach and I look at all of the shops that's closed down there. And I think about it as like, can you imagine having to budget your business where three months out of the year, you basically have no business. Your doors are shut. Now, of course, there's some businesses down there that stay open year round. And, you know, they're basically taking in like the holiday traffic. Cause it, you know, Virginia Beach does a good job of making sure that there's some type of events going down there at the, you know, at the ocean front. But it's just not enough for some of these businesses to stay open. And you you often see places that say Felice because some people, some businesses cannot sustain three months of just no foot traffic whatsoever. Now, with that being said, the flip side of the coin is, you know, during the summer months, everybody's down there. As soon as spring break hits, people start going to Virginia Beach, you know, doing things. But can you survive in your business with just with no with just only nine months of actual revenue? Now imagine if you was working on your job and you and the people will tell you, well, we're only going, we're going to pay you 12 months salary for nine months worth of work. Now there's some people that hear that and they're going to be like, Oh my God, that means I get three months off. That is so great. Thank you. Peace out. I'm done. Because they look at it like, hey, I can go get another part-time job for the next three months. And I can just be caking on top of that. Some other people are like, hey, I got three months vacation. I'm good to go. It reminds me of like the teachers back in the day before they made them work almost year round. They had two months off every year. And they get to choose. They got to choose whether or not they got paid. 12 months and the um, 10 months or they could get continues to get paid for the 12 months while they was out of school. And which made being a teacher, like one of the best jobs you can possibly have because you got essentially two months off every year. Now it's not so much the case. You know, they have a lot of things going on with teachers, you know, through the summer months, which is a very good argument for our teachers raise now i mean this isn't the show for getting on the platform on that uh right now but maybe i should get a teacher up here and talk about all the stuff that they got to go through in their industry that we as parents i'm you know i'm a parent now and all the public does not know that teachers go through but back to the point i'm making 
can you could you survive that now could you survive the three months there's like i said there's one person that's going to be ecstatic because they got three months off now there's the other person who is terrified because they cannot budget their money they're check to check their budget they're they're as tight as a dime Okay, the the size of a dime, you know how thin that dime is? That's how tight their budget is. They can't afford to be out of not having revenue for three months because they're living check to check. So then they got to scramble to get a part-time job, which is more stress, you know, on it. Now, for my industry, there's a there's a one uh, in the mental health industry, there's another section where um people work in the school system. Now for me is I utilize, I utilize that for a windfall during the summertime when the kids are out of school, they're no longer serving those uh, kids in school. So they come to me because that we, I service adults. So they come to me they work part-time It's great. You know, when school starts back up, boom, you know, I get that. I get to lower my overtime. <laughs> I get, it works out for me. Right. But, I also see the stress in their face because every year they're like, hey, CB, do you have any work for me? And I know what they're saying is because they didn't budget their money. They need the money. But, you know, in any type of industry like mental health, you get it's, the burnout rate is outrageous. OK, you would think they would be able to say, hey, I need these two months. <laughs> I need I need to take a break, you know. But they don't, you know, they come see me. So what I want to talk about today is can you really, could you go those three months without any revenue, without any income? Now, when you answer that question to yourself, let's really look at the reasons why you cannot do that. Now, I have another podcast I do with uh, my pastor, Dr. Daniels, and he we talk often about the biblical aspects of things on with finances. So I'm not going to sit here and go through that whole rehash of that, but I will say this. How you should handle your finances is this way. 80% of your finances is what you should live on. 10% should go to savings and another 10% should go to tithing. That's the biblical standpoint of that. It goes back to the days of Egypt, ancient Egypt. Okay. So if you kind of know this works this way, saving 10% for savings and the other 10% going to tithes. So let's say you're not religious at all and you don't tie to anything and let's just take that into account so you should really almost invest because really when you're tied to the church you're investing so if you invest your 10 percent, you should get some type of return back but the whole point of what was what was spoken in the bible was really to make sure you had some money held over when when times got slow okay so if you you should have a building up a little nest egg for when times get slow. So if you were saving ten percent during that time frame that you was making income for the first for those nine months, right during the year, when you have three months off, you should have some money. Now let's take it a step further. If you go, let's say, if you was to take, uh, let's say you sixty percent. And then you save 40%. You save 20% for yourself and then you invest the other 20% or you invest 10% tied 10%, right? But you're able to save 40%. Can you live off 60% of your income? A lot of people go through life where they get more money. It's, it, the amazing thing is my dad used to tell me all the time, CB, you know, you can fix people's problems with money and it only is temporary because literally the more money you make, the more money you spend. 
I can honestly say from the 41 years of being on this earth that that's one of the golden nuggets that my dad instilled in me is the more money people get, the more money they spend. I cannot tell you how many times I've had employees of mine that literally went from, let's say, from making $10 an hour. This actually happened. This actually happened. $10 an hour to an instant jump to $15 an hour. And within six months, the people was coming to me asking me for a raise, even though they just got a $5 an hour raise. So what happened? The more money you make, the more money you spend. You know, you know, every time you watch a football game or a sporting event, what's the what's the commercials that you see? Hello. First thing you see is either, you know, besides the beer commercial and the pizza commercial, you'll see a car and they'll have this nice car driving down this, you know, down this road. And it says professional driver, do not attempt this at home. And, it, and the car has got the smoke and got the dust coming behind it. And it looks all nice and shiny. And then it comes and says, for $4,000 down, you can have this car for just $300 or $350 a month. Or you can lease this car for $500 a month. And it's a luxury car. Now, I just gave you a uh, $5 an hour raise. You're watching this during Super Bowl week or during the bowl games, you know. And you're like, you know what? I got an extra $500 a month in my car. You know, it's raggedy. I, you know what? I could, you know what? I'm going to live a little. I'm going to put that. I'm going to get me a new car. And you go down there and you say, well, and the guy says, hey, you need $4,000 down for this particular price. Well, I only got twelve, you know, 1200 or 1500 You know what? We'll make it work. But it makes the payments a little bit higher. And they're like, oh, man, but I'm, I got an extra 500 Hey, it's going to make your payments a little bit higher. It's only going to make it five fifty. You'd be able to swing it. So the guy sells you on it, right? Then you end up buying the car. You got that new car smell. You're outside with the person. They're snapping pictures, and they're making you feel great. And then what's really, here's the real kicker. You don't get your first um, payment until one month after you have had the car. So it's wonderful. So you're driving around showing that it's like, yes, life is good. Life is great. And you, you know, you even often may even say the words, look at God, look at God. I got this new car. And then now one month later, you got to make a payment. Now you make that payment on that car. Now you're back at when you, where you was at when you make it $10 an hour. You don't feel as good because now your budget is super tight. A lot of people might recall this happening with a lot of folks around 2008 when the housing market went through that crash and those APR rates skyrocketed on people. Remember that? It's um same thing, right? Same thing happens with this person with the car. Now you're driving a new car. You're happy that you got the new car. You love the new car, but your finances is screaming and you're right back in the same boat. Some people, you know, will call this self-sabotage. Some people say, you know, you know, people get used to misery. So they just end up right back in it. But as a supervisor, manager, and business owner, I cannot tell you how many times I have seen this happen with a person within six months is sitting in front of me asking for a raise. Another one. A friend of mine used to work for me back in the day. Well, I asked the family members to work for me back in the day and, you know, friend. He would tell me stories about how at um, GE, you know, you had all this overtime that you can make. It was basically unlimited overtime. You can make as much overtime as you want it to make, Right. And one time GE had a little downturn and they started capping people on the amount of overtime they can make. Now, what is the number one rule people tell you to do when you're working a job that allows overtime? Do not base your take home salary in your budget based on what you're making in overtime. That's the like number one rule. 
But you know what people do all the time. Even Clark W. Griswold and Christmas Vacation did that. Remember, he bought, he put the down payment on the pool, thinking he was going to get a Christmas bonus, and that Christmas bonus did not come through. Remember that? Same thing happened to this guy in that worked at GE. He ended up having to sell stuff that he had bought. You know, it was a bad situation, and people, it's just a reminder of how things like that can happen. And I mean, things like that, I mean, life can happen. So once again, you got to be prepared, but understand you cannot base your budget based on something that is, um, that can be taken away, which is the bonus, you know, your bonus. So if you're getting a bonus at your job, please do not calculate your normal budget based on your bonus. And another uh, tidbit of advice is do not, do not immediately eat or not eat up. I shouldn't say like spend the monthly amount of cash flow that you're getting on a new item because it will put you right back to where you are. I'm telling you, there is a lot of freedom that comes in when you have cash flow, a positive cash flow of things where your cash flow is greatly great is, is greater than what your expenses are. It's a padding. You can put things on. Wait for this. Auto pay. When was the last time you put something on auto pay? I know, I know in my community, the people I talk to, auto pay is like the devil's work. You know, because it's like you forget that you got something on auto pay and all of a sudden you Look at your bank account. I got 500 in here. And then by Monday, it says 200 in there. You're like, what the hell just happened? Auto pay. Ask anybody, ask anybody around you to, of like uh, the streaming services, Netflix and all that. Those are auto pay. That's They want that stuff on auto pay. They want their money right then. And the funny thing about it is, People will put things, will put Netflix, Apple Music, Spotify, all this other stuff on auto pay because they got to on the streaming uh, service, right? But will not put their cable bill on auto pay. It's essentially the same thing, but they won't put the cable bill on auto pay. You want to know why? It's because Netflix will not accept anything but auto pay. And if that bad boy, they hit that account and it don't go through, when you go click on Netflix, you ain't getting Netflix. Okay. So it's just interesting on the mindset of things. So be able, take some time out, think about yourself and really be honest with yourself on your budget for 2020 and how you're going to handle the things going forward. My suggestion is you can handle it biblically, live off 80, save 20, Save 10, invest 10, or tie 10. And if you want to take it the extra step, live off 60, save 40. And if you can get to that, if you can get to the point where you can save, where you can live off 60% and save the other 40, you're going to be way ahead of the game. Because then what's going to happen when you save up enough money, you'll be able to invest into rental property. You'll be able to do other stuff, stocks, invest in other, other businesses, which will then in turn bring you passive cash flow back into your pocket that you could do whatever you want to do with it or, you know, you can spend it or you can, you know, pay off your car or you can just turn around and flip it to another business. Those are things that you should take a look at. Hey, thank you all for listening. This is your host, C.B. Baker. Till next time. Peace.